All right, everyone. So for um, the home stretch of finishing our project, here's the various things we need to do. Uh, we, we're going to look a little bit more at this Android manifest file right on the root of our project. Notice it's not inside of the assets folder. Everything that's in assets is our, is our project. Yes, it's our web project. It's our interface and all of that. But that is an, that is an abstracted layer that below it all, the bedrock of it is still an Android uh, project with its own settings and all of that. And, and on top of that is built our web project. It's just that then uh, the whole system renders this web project as an Android project. So we'll look inside of this Android manifest file and there's a lot of options and settings here that we could change and um, for most of us we are not going to need to really edit a lot of the things here so there's a lot of different screens, a lot of different settings and honestly no one really knows probably doesn't know every single one of these things unless it's necessary. So uh, I'm going to go through a bunch of them, but not every single one of them, because possibly I haven't had a need to actually make a setting change. I can go look it up, see what it does. Oh, that might fit with my project, so then I'll apply this. But I'm going to talk about the ones that I've had experience with and would help you and get our project much more complete. So I noticed this last time, actually, if this happens to you, notice I double-click on Android Manifest XML. It loads up here, this screen, which is a bunch of tabs, and then the XML file. If you don't see that, I've noticed that for a couple of people, you might just get the raw code. If you do get that, you can always do this. Uh, on your Manifest file, you can right-click, open with Android Manifest Editor. It might be opening up as an XML, editor view or an Android common XML editor and therefore you're not going to get these tabs down here. It's an XML file but it's divided into these different screens so that you can better manage what's there and if you don't see that make sure that you open with Android manifest editor. <coughs> it should open properly with a simple double click but if it doesn't that's probably your solution. So again, we'll look uh, on these tabs here, we'll look on the rightmost tab, the Android XML, the actual code, the code view. And on this, it's not very many lines of code, because what this shows you, let's see, 63, this shows you the things, okay, plus the big old license, that's about, you know, 15 um, spaces, or 15 lines. So this shows you everything that is currently active, but these are not all the possibilities of, of editing the details of your app. It's just showing you what is actually active. The other screens, for example under application, there are, there's a bunch of things here that are not active. If I were to act, activate any of these or add anything, then they would add themselves to the XML file. So this is what I'm saying. There's a lot that we could be working with here, but we'll be working with what I believe is the most relevant to us. Um, so we can always edit the code, of course, or just find the screen and change it in the interface. Okay, we'll get back to the XML view in a moment, but let's go back to manifest. Let's look at some of these boxes here. We've looked at this package line a few times before, specifically when we were renaming our project, remember. Uh, this is the internal name. Uh, that's the one that mine is there. You can always refer back to our previous lessons about how to, how to change that properly. And we've got uh, version code and version name. So your version code is going to be a, an ever-increasing numerical value about what version of the code are you working with. Right now, we've been always at version 1, basically. But if we were to be paying attention to this from day 1, we could have been already on version 12 of the code. That's okay. That's internal. What's external or external uh, for the front-facing to the user is the version name. Text shown to the user to indicate the version they have, which is a string. And above that, notice you can hover over all of these things and it'll give you a little bit of a blur. Internal version code, and it's an integer, so it's only a number. Uh, so when we do a version 2.0 of this project, then we would change our version code to 2 and maybe change our version name. Version name is actually a string, so this can be anything. Uh, some, something like, let's say, version 
you know, as we as we work on our project, we are able to edit this whatever way we want. Literally, we can even call this the second version. Hmm. We can think of our own internal naming structure alphabetically, just like Google does. And version two will be on the letter B, so it'll be beryllium. And next time we'll be on cobalt. And next time on what's a D element? Deuterium. Deuterium. No, it's not an element. What is it? It's an isotope. <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> One of those 119. Yeah. Well, something like that. <laughs> um, so the version name is just a string. It can be anything. And this is what the user will see. If have you ever played around with your apps uh, and gone to look at info, however, <coughs> however you do it on your device. If I go over to app info, this will tell me on mine. It says. My, uh, Campus MySDCE version 1.0, which is what I just renamed here. So that is a is a string. It can be anything you want, and you can simply be calling this, you know, 1.0, and next time it'll be 2.0, or it could be 1.5, whatever naming scheme you want, whatever system you want. Uh, but the version code is the one that's going to be incrementing like that. The user doesn't see that one. Now, if you uh, try to post one with a version code that's um, uh, less than or equal to what you have up there, is it going to uh, kick it back and uh, complain about that? You know what? I have to double check on that. Uh, I'm sure that I read it in the beginning, and I forgot, uh, but I'm sure there will be some sort of conflict. Yeah, it's not going to care about version name, but there could be a problem with version code. We'll look that. Uh, so I'm going to keep version code 1, and on version name you could write whatever you want here. And I'll just keep it as version 1.0 for the moment, because perhaps you know next week we'll upload uh, version code 2 and version name 1.5 or something. Uh, don't worry about share user ID or share user label at the moment. Install location, we have a couple of options here. Uh, we have auto, internal only, prefer external. So we could set ourselves up that our app will prefer to automatically install itself to the SD memory card, freeing up space for the users uh, from the user's internal memory. Or I could say this can only be installed internally. There's probably a difference between leaving it empty and selecting auto. But I'm going to say let's select that to be auto. Let the um, environment choose. The default install location defined by an application. Now, I think I've seen in somewhere you get a choice, uh, but that doesn't seem to be among the things that lets the user choose for it. Uh, I'm sure that that has to be probably extra set up in the app to make that sort of activity visible to them choose. I don't think it happens quite automatically, but here a person should be able to choose either or. So those are a few general attributes of the project. Then we've got here manifest extras. Support screens and uses SDK. If you select support supports screen, this is where I see a couple of rough around the edges things in the um, in Eclipse, you need an editor. The something specifies the screen dimensions and application supports. So a couple of places here and there, I, it seems like something's missing, but we can probably understand what they're trying to tell us. The you know attribute specifies the screen dimensions and application support. But anyway, here then we can uh, we can set some of these if we want. Uh, available on small screens, yes or no, or true or false, normal screens, large screens, extra large screens. Uh, we can then limit, uh, for example, what sort of DPI or, or screen <coughs> resolution that we can target. Right now we're going to target a pretty wide range of devices, but actually um, we, can, we can target it and we can say our, our app is too advanced or too high-tech to really work on old devices, so we'll say works on small screens? No, we need more of the larger real estate. I'm not going to change any of these. But here we're getting a large range of possible devices to install to. 
we've got uses SDK. Now this is something we're going to come back to, but this is going to be very important uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, so here we can specify the minimum SDK version, a target to render with, and a, and a maximum SDK version. So right here we're saying between 7 and 17. Um, and we're going to need to get back to this a little bit later because I believe I've mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. We're using PouchDB, which allows us to save some of that data uh, in a database, right? And from the documentation that I've read and from my own experience, PouchDB does not work on older devices running Android 2X. So it doesn't work on 2.3 and uh, you know 2.1 and that whole 2.x branch. So we will have to say a little later to update this to at least, I think, 3x. I haven't tested it on a 3x device, but I've um, tested it on a 4x. So we might have to say this is only compatible with a certain range of devices. Uh, you don't want to release something that one of your features simply doesn't work on older devices. One way to prevent that is to say the minimum SDK excludes people that have an older device. So we will get back to that, but that's where we find that uses SDK. I'm going to save my file so far. Let's switch over to the application tab over here. So we've got these other items we can fill in, for example, name, an optional name of a class implementing the overall android.app.application for this package, which is a string. Uh, so any of these that are blank at the moment, I'm not really going to change, but remember here is where we can set uh, our, our app's name which appears below our icon. This is set to this resource <coughs> over here. Uh, the icon, remember we changed that. This is an optional uh, logo that we can also add that does something else. An optional description that could be attached to the project. I'm not going to change any of that. Again, a lot of these other ones, there's, a, there's various things that we could do, uh, but I'm not going to change any of these just yet, because a couple will show up when we're ready to actually finally publish the app. Um, so I'm going to skip these for the moment. But if we select down here on Application Nodes, we've got a spot, an item that I do want to change. Uh, so that still has the internal name from when we set up PhoneGap a long time ago, example. Um, we could change it, but uh, it might uh, break other things, so that the user's never going to see that, so I'm okay leaving it as is. Now, more attributes appeared over here, which are actually, many of them are duplicates of what are on, what's on top. But one thing that is useful that appears, if you scroll down, Screen orientation, which is currently not set. Specify the orientation an activity should be run in. An activity is uh, is our project, a screen full of our project. And it's set to nothing at the moment, but look at our options. We've got a bunch of them. One of them is portrait. I think my app works best when it's locked to portrait orientation. Right now, because it's not set to anything, I can load up my project. I can load up my project and then I can view it, you know, if, I if I'm holding it up portrait, it's portrait. If I go uh, horizontal or landscape, it was landscape but it's kind of cluttered. Uh, so I think my project would work best as simply always portrait. So I'm going to select that. We've got a few other options, but I'll go with portrait. I noticed that on the emulator, if I do go portrait or landscape, it doesn't really react to the orientation change, which is odd. But on the real device, it does. <clears throat> I'm 
Let's see, a couple other things that I found interesting here. For example, under No History, specify whether an activity should be kept in the history stack. It's a Boolean. It's true or false. Uh, yes or no. So that means right now, if I go back to my home screen and I open up my, my history, it shows that my app it was one of the recent apps. I can turn that off um, for some reason. I wouldn't really take that away from the, from the user's control, though, but you could if you wanted to. Show on lock screen, potentially. Specify that an activity should be shown over the lock screen and in a multi-user environment across all users' windows. That's going to need some extra setup, but in theory, you could be setting yourself up that your app also shows up when your device is locked. You know, it shows some sort of information there. So the only thing I really changed at the moment was changing the orientation to portrait. I'm going to save the file again. Let's look at permissions. So because we're running uh, PhoneGap 3x, um, this is more of, how does the saying go, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Um, whereas the 4x branch is the opposite. They ask for permission before forgiveness. So here, every possible feature of your phone is accessible by your app. In contrast, the newer phone gap has nothing active until you activate it. So when we're running 3x, we have to remember to turn off what we don't need, because I think it will alarm your your users if they're trying to download an app of yours before you download any app there's always a screen that says this app would like to permission to use these things camera gps your contacts etc etc and i would think people would be nervous i'm downloading a game and why does it say it wants to see my contacts is it going to spam my contacts with like um offers to give me more gold that sort of thing so in this version of PhoneGap, we should remove the things that we don't need. So it's a simple matter of either selecting them here and clicking remove, or of course we can go to the XML file and notice we've got various lines, such as uses permission, Android name, Android permission, camera, vibrate, receive SMS, etc. So of course we can edit it in the code or in this simple screen here. So let's go through the list of here of things that we don't need and remove it because again I don't want to alarm people when they download this app. We were playing with the camera a while ago but our app doesn't use the camera. So let's remove that one. Select camera and we can actually remove more than one at once if we want. If you click one and then control click you can select more than one. But at this point, I'm going to select the camera and say we don't need the camera permission. It confirms. Um, my app, I don't, I don't know if everyone got the same code. Remember we had that little snafu? Mine does use vibrate. When I, um, when I remove a class from the CRN screen, uh, mine does a quick little vibrate as feedback. Or if I make a mistake, I also get a, a little vibrate that I made the mistake. So mine definitely vibrates. I don't remember if all of yours does. You could remove that or not. Then that you've got your two GPS, your three GPS items here: course location, find location, and extra location info. Uh, so course location could give you, let's say, uh, instead of you know a little pin drop right in this building it might be maybe a block away it's a course location and a fine location could be you know actually closer to your physical location the other extra location information not a, not sure exactly what it does but it's all related in our case we do have uh, we do want to access location info right we've got the map if we turn that off perhaps our map might not work so I'll leave those on 
The map is on the internet. I want to be able to access the internet, so we'll leave that one on. Does our app need to receive any text messages? Nope. Do we need to record any audio or video? Nope. It's, that's especially uh, a, a tricky thing on privacy. We don't want to scare people. This app is going to record audio? What does that mean? Is it going to record me when I say something? So I'm going to select those receive SMS, record audio and video, and remove them. Modify audio settings. That should be related to, for example, increasing or decreasing volume in the system. We don't exactly do that, do we? We don't play any audio. Uh, we don't play any audio on our app, so I think we're okay removing that one. We don't need to modify audio settings. We don't need to read or write contacts. Right? We don't want to check in people's phone books. <clears throat> write external storage. I don't I I don't believe that's exactly related to our phone gap. I think phone gap saves things external storage. I believe that is just for like an SD card and our project, our phone gap is, is writing content to a database but it's within the project so I don't think that um, is the same thing. I'm gonna leave it and then maybe research. Access network state I'm gonna leave it on because we need to know uh, are we connected online? Is there an actual map? that uh, I can download. If there's no map, uh, then I can't get the driving directions, and we need to know that, so access network state, I'll leave that on. These last two, I forgot to look them up exactly what they do, so we'll leave them on for the moment, and then later on we'll, we'll confirm those, get accounts and broadcast sticky. So we'll look those up. But this is the screen where we where we would be setting our permissions, where we are fine-tuning what our app can and cannot do. I'm going to save that. Instrumentation, I'm going to skip that screen at the moment. And again, that brings us back to the Android Manifest file. So everything that I've done on these previous screens show up here, but I've noticed a quirk here and there. Sometimes when I make a change in the code, it doesn't show up in the, you know, in the visual screen, and vice versa. Sometimes I make a change in one of these visual tabs, and I check my code, and it hasn't changed. And I think the best way to fix that is to save your file and open it and close it, and then it wakes it up. Now on mine, I've got a few little warning signs here and there. And I want to see if there's any others. So after we've done this, we'll switch over to problems. Any questions so far editing this manifest file? Again, there's a lot of little details here and there, but it seems that unless we need to do something, we don't really need to change anything. Let's switch over to the Problems tab down here. Ooh, mine says 35 items. All right, so let me rearrange this a little bit so I can see some more. So mine says I've got 35 warnings, no errors, which is great. Uh, remember, errors prevent you from actually compiling the app. But I've got some warnings. I want to deal with these, of course, if I can. So I'm going to open that up, and um, let's see what we've got. So the very first one up here, oh, there's a bunch that are repeated for me. Attribute hardware accelerated is, on, is only used in API 11 or higher, current 
minute is 7. Okay, so this one is saying if I want to use hardware accelerated, I can only use this on devices that have API 11 or higher. So two ways to fix this is that I set my app to use 11 or higher, or not use hardware accelerated. Uh, we are going to use a newer version of the API anyway, because as I said about PouchDB, it's not compatible with the older devices. Uh, so we'll fix that one first. Which API level? I know you said 4.4 or 4.something, but what does that correspond to on the API level? I always have to look it up, so let me go back to the SDK Manager. That'll tell us here. Let's see here. We want to use 4.0. That's 14. So we would be, so it's saying at, at least 11, which is 3.0, it's uh, honeycomb and up. So I think that's what we will do. We will say to use at least 11 and higher. That'll take care of that issue and uh, with more research than to be sure if it works, if this fixes pouch. But also let me just get a quick show of hands here. How many of you have 35 errors like me? How many of you have more than 35? Okay, how many of you have less than 35? Okay, so let's see if we can answer as many of these as possible. So are, you, are some of you, probably everyone is getting the, the hardware accelerated thing. We never changed that one. So let's, let's fix that one. That one is saying uh, our API is too low. A couple of ways to change it, of course. Um, somewhere over here under application... Where is it under manifest? SDK, yeah. So one way to change it is if you go back to your manifest tab, uses SDK set to 7, we can put that to 11. Another way is on our XML file, we've got a line, mine is line 53, same thing. Notice how that's the raw code, and in the manifest screen, it's the it's the uh, simple inter interface. So either way, let's change this. I'm going to say Android min SDK version. I'm going to put there 11. Uh, how important is, I, I recognize that we have a PouchDB issue, but how important is hardware acceleration for a site of this, or you know, an app of this type? It doesn't seem like we're doing anything super difficult other than maybe transitions. That's, and that's what I've noticed. Perhaps that's why you would want that, because you don't, you want to give people the smoothest experience possible. And if they see, you know, your transitions chugging along, that kind of breaks them out of the out of the, the user experience. Mm -hmm. So I would take advantage of it. So let's do this. Line 53, if you're in the code, change that to 11. I'm going to save. Save the file. There we go, down to three warnings. Does anyone still have dozens of warnings? Okay. Just three, good. Okay, so that's one, one item. What's that? One error. One error, okay. We'll look at yours in a moment. <laughs> okay, so this is a weird one that I've seen always crop up, especially using PhoneGap. Uh, and again, since we're using 3x, maybe it's fixed on 4. This is saying, uses SDK tag appears after application tag. So the code, our code is slightly out of order. Um, at some point, uh, the phone gap code was set up perhaps wrong, but it's a warning, not a fatal error. We can fix that, though. Uh, the easiest way, actually, I think the only way to fix this is through the code. I don't believe we can fix it through any of these tabs over here. This is what, what this is saying, and it's saying line 53. So what you can always do when you see a warning or an error, if you've got your code view, you can double click any of these and it'll jump you to the line, to the offending line. So mine's on 53 and it says, that tag appears after application tag. So I've got uses SDK and a little bit higher, we've got application slash application tags, XML tags. So what this uh, seems to be saying is that the, the user's SDK is in the wrong place. So I'm going to cut and paste it. I'm going to move it from 53 up to 40, depending how your lines of code are. But I'm going to move, let me 
turn this on over here. I'm going to move that line down from the bottom up to the top. Like this. I'm going to take this line down here, and I'm going to move it up here. Before the application slash application chunk. Let's see, can we drag and drop? No. I'm just going to select it and cut it. Remember, cut it, don't paste it. So notice that I took it from down here to up here. Save it. Hopefully that gets rid of one of those warnings, the, the top one it's complaining about. Save. All right, down to two warnings. This is another thing that I've noticed, and this is with Phone Gap. This one says, "Not targeting the latest version of Android. Compatibility modes apply. Consider testing on updated version." So what this is saying is that we currently have in our setup here at home. It may be different if you're doing updates. We've got uh, API 19 installed, Android 4.4.2. But this is saying, over on this screen over here, target SDK version. We're saying use SDK 17 to render our project, to compile our project. We don't have it installed, so that might be a problem. We also see that in the code, uh, in my case, line 40, the one we just moved. This is saying minimum version, target version, 17. And we've got 19 installed. How do I know? Again, in this lab, and you can check, you know, when you, when you look at your SDK manager, you'll see that it says SDK platform turned on. So that's 19. I've got that one installed. I don't have 20, it's not checked, and I don't have 21, it's not checked. So any of these that are checked under the SDK platform mean that they're installed, and that's 19. So the warning is telling me I should be using 19 to compile my project. So since I'm already in code, I'll just change it there. Line 40 in my case, where you see Android target SDK version, change that to 19. line 40. <clears throat> so I'm going to save it. Oh, did it? <coughs> yeah, but we don't have it installed here. We yeah, just must know about it. Huh. Let me check something right here. Uh, I'm going to project clean. Okay, couple of things. Let's see how should we solve this. So we can. Um, I put it on nineteen, and the warning. The warning didn't go away, but then I cleaned the project, but then it removed the other item. Okay, let's leave it for the moment. I have a solution in just a moment. Let's leave it on nineteen because that's what we have installed here. Perhaps on your home computer you do have twenty. So you can you can put it on twenty and you'll be okay. But uh, we'll come back to this one moment. Question um, on this machine, go <coughs> to the SDK manager nineteen twenty and twenty one. Um, what are the warnings that are displayed there? Well, uh, be be careful because if the just because if the check mark is on doesn't mean it's installed. Does it also say here? You're right. Okay, so it's 
certainly ones that we know about. You say that again? Those are certainly API versions that we know about, and so saying that we should be targeting the, uh, the latest uh, API uh, you know, system knows about that. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, 19 was the latest one, even when Android L was out. So um, let's get back to this. But let's say that we will put it on 19 because that's what we have installed. We'll get rid of that warning in just a moment. Now, mine, uh, mine went away here, so you'll have to tell me exactly what it says. But you probably have one more that says set debuggable, something like that. What does it say exactly? Allow backup. Allow backup. Okay. Let's deal with that one. All right, so the one more error or warning that po possibly you may, a lot of you say is about the backup. That's going to be found over here. Remember, the XML file shows you things that are, that are on. If they're set to true or false or whatever, they'll be visible here. But if they're not set to anything, they're not visible in the code. So in this case, I do have to go over to Application tab. These are the possibilities that I could be writing in code. And here's what, here's what it's telling me. That warning is over here. On the right side column, there's a section that says Allow Backup, whether to allow the application to participate in the backup and restore infrastructure. It's set to nothing. So that warning is telling me I should write something here. Either, you know, is it true or false, or yes or no. It's true or false. So it's saying, is this going to be part of when, when backups happen on the device? Is this app going to be a part of that? We didn't specify it, so some devices might back up your device as well. I'm sorry, might, some devices might back up your app. If you don't say anything, some of them might do it. We don't know. So it's that warning is saying you should be explicit about that to say true or false. I'm going to say yes, I want my app to be part of a backup that happens with my, uh, with my device. I don't want to lose that stuff. I want to select allow backup true. App or the data? Um, not sure. I would assume the data too, because it would, um, you know, if you do a backup of your device, it should back up everything that's on it, which I would assume the data as well. That's another thing we can look up. I'm going to save that. Okay, here we go. That that came back. Now, did it get? Did it remove that that one that had about the backup? <coughs> okay, so I've got one last warning, and I guess because um, Eclipse or the SDK manager knows that twenty one is the latest one, that's why it's still complaining about that. I guess it doesn't mean about which is the one installed, it means the actual one that exists. We did not recommend installing five. <laughs> not yet until they work the bugs out? Uh, phone gap and two, uh, phone gap two nine, <laughs> five, the build tools, we don't get along. Oh. Hmm. I actually have to start a whole new uh, SDK install. Really? It was that bad? <laughs> well, we're living on the edge and figuring it out for our fellow developers. So here's what I'm going to do. If you still have this warning about not targeting the latest, here's something we could do. Uh, let's go up to the project menu and let's go to clean. Uh, so I tried setting it to true, but no. it was weird. No. So, like it, it didn't. It, it was lagging. Okay. So let's try this now. Let's go to project clean. Uh, we've only got one project, so clean all projects is fine. Uh, but I've actually noticed it's smart enough because if I don't edit, the, if I've got five projects, but I'm really only editing this one and I leave it on all projects, it will still just target the one that needs to be cleaned. But if you want to select individual projects, you can. In any event, clean all projects, let's click OK. It'll do a little processing, and in my case, it removed all warnings and errors. 
hopefully. So these are the main things I wanted to look at, at the, with the Android Manifest file. These are these low-level things that apply to the project, to the core of the project, the foundation of the project. Notice we didn't get into our assets folder and such. Uh, so at this point, these are the things I want to edit here. Uh, let's take a short break just to make sure everyone's on track. And then when we come back, we'll actually do the whole creating a developer key and signing our project and actually finally creating our final project. Let's do 10 minutes. We'll be back at 7.12. We'll go on.